Hi, I'm Karen Elaine Thomas with Yasutomo. Art should be playful, not intimidating. I'm going to show you a basic watercolor technique that will make your creation stand out and sparkle. Let me show you how easy it is. All right, now I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful watercolor embellishment. First, I'm going to use a Judikins Three Sisters stamp. It is a beautiful, nicely detailed stamp, which you need when you do this technique, and some fine embossing pattern. I'm going to go ahead and ink my stamp, and ink it generously. The surface that I'm using is a watercolor block. You can find it in most art supply stores, so I'm going to go ahead and stamp and I have a nice impression. I'm going to take some fine embossing powder, just sprinkle it onto the image, and be generous because you can just shake it right off. As long as everything sticks to the image, you're good. And just take a look at it, and if there are any little dots of powder, just brush them off with a brush. Now I'm going to heat emboss it. And I've got a pretty hot gun, so pay attention to what kind of heat gun you have because this one can melt the paint off of it. Uh, off of the furniture, so I just have to be careful. So you want to emboss this so that you can see the shininess. You want the powder to fuse uh, onto the wet ink and it becomes a nice raised image. Now I'm done and it's all ready to go. So to start painting, I actually have this wonderful tool called the water brush. It has water in the handle and that's very convenient. Now what you do is you unscrew the, the water brush and you just, you'll see there's a little black cap. Don't remove that cap. Go into your cup of water, squeeze it, and as you let it go, the water will go into the handle. And this is a very convenient way to fill it. And I've got some beautiful Japanese watercolors from Yasutomo. Finely ground, highly pigmented, concentrated paints. And so you don't need much. The first technique is the wet on wet technique. And I'm gonna do some skin tone here, just in the face. Just use clear water and create a little bit of uh, just moistness. You don't want it dripping, but you want it to be a little shiny when you look at it. Since these are cake paints, drop a little bit of water in the colors that you're going to use, and that will get them nice and juicy and ready for you to start working. So that's with all cake paints. They're just, there's a little bit of glue that holds it together. And when these dry, then they'll be in good shape for your next project. So now I'm going to drop that paint right into the face. The water will push this around, which is really kind of fun. And if you want to make the face lighter, let's say you feel like you need to, to pull out a little bit using a paper towel, you can just lot out some paint. To clean your colors for the next time, just take a paper towel and squeeze the brush until the water is clear and now you're ready for your next color. This a little bit more concentrated color is really pretty for hair. And what's really nice about this technique, because of the raised lines, you really don't have to worry about staying in the lines. They sort of work as a resist and it works out really well. Now I'd normally finish this and let it dry before I take it off the block, but I want to show you how to take it off the block. Most of these blocks, they're all bound on all sides. You can stick a knife, a dull knife. I have a bone folder here. Just go around gently and it will take off the top page. And now I have the finished piece. I've already trimmed around the edges and you can see the colors that I've used. I've used the iridescent blue and some of the Japanese blue. It's very shimmery and uh, luminescent. You can see that the colors are blending and they're very soft. I think it's very elegant and very artistic. So I do wanna add a little more bling to it. So I have this Japanese watercolor. It's a very concentrated gold. And you'll see when I put it in my brush how it looks like liquid gold. It is so beautiful. And the beauty about this is I've used many paint markers and they have some solvents and they're very nice, but this has no solvent and it's highly concentrated. And I'm gonna go ahead and line the edge. And because of my black embossed edge, I have a little resist, so I don't have to be exact. I just line the whole border. And since this is a little drier brush technique, it won't wrinkle the paper. Now here is the finished piece, everything trimmed and ready to be put on the card. I'm just going to stack the elements of this card. And first I have a piece of red cardstock and I'm just going to peel and lay it on top of the card. And then I take my finished element, which I think is beautiful. Then I took a little embellishment here. I actually printed off my computer onto some cardstock. And to add to this, I have a piece 
of Mizuhiki paper cord. This is from Yasutomo. They're really a simple way to add a little sparkle and a little pizzazz to any of your scrapbook pages or cards. And there's the card. I don't have a standard size card. That means I don't have a standard envelope. I have a formula for you for any card shape to make this envelope. What you need is a piece of paper that is double the width of your card. This card's six inches wide, so I have a 12 inch wide piece of paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the card aside. And the, really the beauty about this fold is you don't have to really worry about where you're gonna start it. And you can decide which side of paper you wanna do. You just start an angle across the paper. The next fold is the opposite side. You just have the paper meet. That's very easy. And what you'll see is that will actually fit that card. So isn't that magical? I just love it. That's why you have the double the width. Now I'm gonna do a little address band. And how I do that is I just fold one side of the paper. So I'm giving it about an inch, a little over an inch maybe. You can go as wide or as thin as you want. And I'm gonna turn it back over. As you can see, there's no pattern needed here. I'm just gonna fold about midway, but as long as my sides line up and then crease, and I'll bring back my card in to determine where I'm going to drop this down. And I'm gonna fold it right here and then pull it out and crease. And now I'm going to put my card in a perfectly sized envelope. You can see it goes here, just Fold up the bottom, you have a pocket and you have a tab. And just take your pieces and slide them through and you now have a perfectly beautiful sized envelope. Now I'm ready to use my address tab and I'm just gonna write an address. You can write anything you want. I think I'll mail this to myself, see what happens here. Now I'd like to show you some other watercolor projects and a few more envelopes. Well, I've showed you how to make the bigger envelope, but here's a little envelope. It's actually sized to fit a gift card. You can see how easy it is, and you can put gift cards, business cards, all kinds of fun things in this simple envelope. Now, here is the three sister stamp on this shikishi board with uh, myself and my friends, and I've created a little, little display. And this watercolor technique can be used on other stamps. As you can see here, this is another Judykin stamp. And just look how it sparkles and shimmers and blends, and it just looks really stunning. Now, see how easy this was? Now, I know that your inner artist is waiting to come out and play. See you next time. For step-by-step -step instructions on how to create this week's project, download the design guide featuring special make-it-your-own bonus tips.